What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I will be bringing you 40 facts and the lore behind the burning of Prospero. With all these new information that GW keeps on giving us, it has just fueled my fires and my love evermore for my favorite legion. Well, tied for my favorite legion, the Thousand Suns. So, I bring you the dawn of the destruction of Prospero. There were those amongst the legions of Stardes who became aware of the coming disaster and who risked much to warn the emperor of his favored son's betrayal. None amongst them paid a higher price than Magnus the Red, Primarch of the Thousand Sons. Magnus had always followed his own path. Sent hurling through the warp as an infant during the scattering of the Primarchs, the grotesque giant had the fortune to come and rest upon a planet of hermit-like psychers who embraced him where a standard imperial would surely have purged him as a mutant. His study of the arts blossomed as the original settlers of Prospero mentored him in the ways of the hermit arts and the philosophical ways. In the space of scant years, he rose to the pinnacle of the planet's arcane hierarchy. Far from the sight of man, Magnus led his fellow refugees in the pursuit of hidden knowledge. At the heart of their pursuits was a single goal, the mastery of the psychic mutation that set them apart from humanity's common herd. By the time the Emperor arrived upon Prospero in all his magnificence, the Crimson King had cast his mind's eye into the great ocean of the warp. At first he had been transfixed, even horrified by the limitless potentials he saw there. Over time, however, he came to relish the knowledge he gleaned with each psychic odyssey, and he became obsessed. When the Crimson King was finally visited by the Emperor, he greeted him as an old friend would, for the two had linked minds across the endless Empyrean many times, and the physical equivalent was almost a formality. Magnus was united with the Legion of Space Marines fashioned from his gene seed, and the Thousand Suns were born. Though physically, the equal of their brother legions, mentally they had been cast in their forefather's image, and many had psychic abilities, far more potent than any blade or bullet. Deep within their genetic structure, however, the Thousand Suns had a dangerous instability that saw several of their number undergo the uncontrolled mutation known as the Flesh Change. Magnus, with his limitless intellect, found a way to bypass this flaw. For a while, it was all well, and the Thousand Suns soared to new heights of ability as they combined their psychic mastery with their peerless might of the Legion of Sardis. Many a world was conquered and brought to compliance in their wake. All that was to change at the Council of Nikea. In many ways, that great judicial gathering, presided over by the Emperor himself, was seen as a trial for the Thousand Suns. Some of the Primarchs amongst them, Mortarian and Lehman Russ, had witnessed the destructive powers of Master Psychers firsthand, and considered them a dangerous liability. The debate was long and arduous, but at its culmination an edict was issued. The Legions would cease their use of the Psychers, their librarians reassigned to standard fighting units, and forbidden to use any mental powers. Each Legion compliant and sanctity was then brought and ensured by the chaplaincy. Magnus, whose entire order was built on a bedrock of Edric lore, outwardly acquiesced, but he continued his studies of the Empyrean in secret, and his thousand sons likewise continued to perfect their own arts. It was Magnus's obsession with uncanny abilities that ultimately sealed his doom. When the War Master Horus fell at Davin, Magnus the Red witnessed it all. Through astral projection, the Crimson King beheld Horus' turning from light, and it shook him to his very core. He used Warpcraft to send a message, winding across the galaxy to the Emperor upon Terra, a pulse so strong it could not be denied. That psychic imperative burst the carefully martial defenses of the Emperor's inner sanctum, filling his mind with Magnus' visions and wrecking the great work for which he planned to bring final order to the galaxy. Incensed beyond measure by this transgression, the Emperor immediately sent for his trusted champion and executioner, Lehman Russ of the Space Wars. 
Russ was secretly pleased by the chance to test the might of his Fernrisian warriors against his rival legion, for he considered them to have strayed from the Imperials' designs. He gathered his warbands and made haste to Prospero, his fleet entirely unopposed. Only Magnus had any idea of what was to befall his homeworld, but he told his sons nothing of the dire fate ahead. In causing the psychic disaster at the Emperor's palace, Magnus had realized that his pride in his own ability had blinded him from the consequences of its use. He had retreated to Prospero and remained in seclusion, brooding on the events that had led him to such extreme measures. Some believe it possible that he invited this fleet to his door, massing their approach so that his thousand sons would find absolution in the fires of the coming invasion. When the wolves struck, it was with world-shattering force. Munitions rained from their orbiting fleet like hail. The beautiful architecture and cultivated gardens of Prospero consumed in a world fire. Only Fair Zika remained intact. This metropolis was protected by a vast psychic shield. There would the fates of the thousand suns and space wolves be intertwined forever. Now we shall dive into the lore of Azek Ariman. Azek Ariman was the chief librarian of the Thousand Sons. During the Legion's founding, the most psychically gifted of Magnus' disciples were split into several distinct temples. Amongst them were the Pavoni, a cabal of gifted biomancers, the Raptora, masters of telekinetics, the Pyre, those who could conjure and control flame, and the Athenians, who practiced telepathy. Alongside them fought the Corvidae, who sifted the strands of the future, with Ariman as their Magister Templar. Even with all this wisdom and supernatural prescience, Azek Ariman was unable to foresee the doom that was to tear them from the heart of his legion and set his world aflame. Long before the invasion of Prospero, Ariman's twin brother, Ormans, was lost to a cursed genetic instability that saw him devolve into fleshy ruin. Since that dark day, Ariman had obsessively searched for ways to influence and predict the future. At first, he desired a harmonious accord between the Thousand Suns and the wider galaxy, for the loss of control was his greatest fear. Ambitions and intensity capable, he became a guiding light for his legion. Yet, there was one who made him look dull by comparison, his Primarch. When Russ came for him, Magnus the Red psychically shrouded the Imperial fleet from Ariman and the Corvidae. In this way, he ensured that his legion would receive the punishment he believed was due. Ariman, who had always looked upon Magnus as a beloved father and mentor, was devastated when the Imperial invasion hit home. How could Magnus have let this happen? Ariman's love for the Primarchs scoured to a bitter ire. Unwilling to simply give up, he marshaled his surviving brothers and fought back hard, for Prospero's sake if nothing else. With the swelling power at the warp of his fingertips, Ariman's counterattack was a powerful one indeed. Tactical Division Pavoni Cult Roten Za Roten Za is part of the Pavoni Cult and he uses the esoteric abilities of the Biomancer to channel warp energy through his physical form. This gives him a supernatural resilience that saw him fight on through grievous trauma. Despite having sustained gaping vulture wounds in his torso during the opening stages for the War of Prospero, Za still took a heavy toll on the invaders that spread fire in the streets of his home before finally succumbing to the bite of a Fenrisian wolf. Lofotis, Jalek, Hesmut, the first company Sekhmet, Scarab Occult. As one of the Sekhmet, Magnus's Scarab Occult, Hesmet no longer exists as an individual in the conventional sense of the word. Having put aside the sense of self in the quest for enlightenment, he fights to follow orders with perfect calm. The eye of a storm of psychic flame and mass reactive bolts, he sends blazing into his enemies. He is one of the vaunted Adepts Exemplae, expert psychers who stand but one step from perfection of the Dominus Liminus. His weapons are those of the Legion of Stardes, but also those of the Scarab Occult. Hailing from the Pyre Cult in his former life, Hesmet is able to bring whirling storms of warp fire into being. 
Hesmet was such a warrior that he never sustained a wound, that is, until the invasion of Prospero. The suit of Tartarus pattern Terminate armor in which he goes into war makes him all but invulnerable. Perhaps the most advanced of all war suits, when Tartarus Smart provides greater mobility than the widespread Cataphracti version, and with no loss of power or durability. Hesmet was instrumental in the Scarab Occult's defense of the Athenian library at the devastating climax of the Prospero War, and later bought time for his legion to escape before he too succumbed to the flesh curse. And that brings us to the conclusion of the first part of The Burning of Prospero. Stay subscribed because next time we will be going over the Space Wolves and their part in this battle. Let me know what was your favorite part in this. Did you enjoy the mini lore on Ariman, or do you want a full-fledged lore for you guys to enjoy? As always guys, I want to remind you that we do have a Patreon page, and that is basically another means of getting more 40k video and improving your 40k experience. And it's only a dollar a month, so why not? Thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you guys for subscribing, commenting, and being just great subscribers. We really enjoy reading your comments. And I think I've rambled on for too long, so without further ado, I am the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out.